Good evening, my Woodlot viewers. It's Grace Romer here with the Watershed Agricultural Council, and today I have taken you by my local lake shore. So today I'm going to be talking to you about riparian zones. Riparian zones are essentially what I'm sitting and looking at right now. Um, they are areas of land along bodies of water, like streams, lakes, um, rivers, and brooks. So, riparian zones are essentially this land that I'm currently on. Riparian zones, so the reason we love riparian zones here at WAC um, is because riparian zones help keep our drinking water clean. You might ask, well, how do they do that? So, by planting things like grasses, sedges, trees, wildflowers, the whole kabang, um, those plants essentially have a root system that holds in the soil, so preventing runoff, um, preventing erosion, that could get into potential water streams and pollute it, and provide excess sediments, which we don't want. Um, and by holding in that soil, it also uses its roots in the soil itself to filter out um, anything that we don't really want in there, certain contaminants, certain pollutants, pollutants, sorry, that can get caught in the root system, or that can get um, kind of filtrated underground before entering a water system. And this water system that I'm at right now, this is a man-made lake, um, this river's existed, but the lake behind me is man-made, um, has a waterfall that does distribute into a brook, and that brook eventually empties into the Hudson River. And although we don't use the Hudson River here as drinking water because of its salinity, um, we still don't want a dirty, um, a dirty huge river that's connecting from neighborhoods where people and wildlife live, recreate, and have families. Um, and that transfers all the way down into New York City and then eventually the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so everything's connected, including our water um, and including the riparian zones that help us keep, keep our water clean. So this riparian zone that I'm at it's not a great example of a riparian zone we want to see. I mean, it's a great, it's a great start. Um, this right over here, with all this forested land connected to the water, is a great example of a riparian zone um, because of how heavily forested it is, and there's a lot of opportunity for um, large sediments or particulate matter to get caught in there. A riparian zone also like this is a pretty good example in terms of there's a lot of grasses, there is clover, and there are wildflowers and some trees. An example of not such a great riparian zone is right here behind me. We have minimal, we have some minimal um, flowers coming up and some grasses, but it's not enough, especially right over here where we have this gap of space where things are just able to really just run off right into it. So I like to say the more heavily vegetated, the better for your riparian zone. So, I hope you learned something about riparian zones and their importance. A lot of people don't like to install them sometimes because they're not super aesthetically pleasing or they might block the view of the land, but there are so many ways to make your riparian zones and your backyards super biodiverse and beautiful. And we have some links on my woodlot as to how to do that, so check out those articles and enjoy your night!